For our first story today, we go to the or <clears throat> excuse me. For our first story, for our first story today, we clear our throats and go to the organic prepper. Not everyone in Hollywood supports cancel culture. Some harsh words for the PC crowd. <laughs> So, by now, you've probably heard of cancel culture. If you haven't, here's a definition and an example from Urban Dictionary. A desire to cancel out a person or community from social media platforms. It is characterized by the response of an evil individual when they are shown to be wrong. They will call on their followers to report the social media accounts of the person or group that did the criticizing rather than discussing the criticism or showing by evidence where the criticism is incorrect. Narcissists make up the majority of the people who engage in cancel culture, and others who do this would include immature individuals. Example, Johnny was criticized for being vindictive against Janny, and instead of discussing the problem, Johnny called for his followers to report the account, cancel culture style of the person who made the criticism. Now, this is a pretty no-holds-barred definition, right? An evil individual when they're shown to be wrong. Now, that's not always the case. I mean, maybe, the, I think you have to have a, a broader definition. And remember, anybody could have, you know, uh, posted this as a, as a definition from Urban Dictionary. Uh, I guess th this is uh, so that the... Uh, this is the top definition on Urban Dictionary, 583 upvotes. So it's not like uh, our, our author Daisy Luther is cherry picking this here. But, you know, I would say that there are people, you know, it's, it's not necessarily an evil individual, but maybe an embarrassed individual or uh, maybe someone with some false outrage or doing some kind of virtue signaling. I mean, there, there are more reasons for you know, uh, engaging in cancel culture than I think narrowly defined here. We've been seeing it more and more, but it only applies when convenient as well. You can get canceled for something you did decades ago before it was politically incorrect. For example, Megyn Kelly lost her television show because she even dared to question appearing in blackface. But Governor Ralph Northam, who had photos in his old yearbook of himself in blackface, is still in office, taking away gun rights from Virginians uh, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau can't recall how many times he's worn blackface, but he's still got re-elected. Like, that's, that's a thing. Some people get away with it and others do not. It seems to depend on which political party you support. And this is really what is the danger behind cancel culture. And I'm, in a sense, I'm for, and, and I hate to say this because some people have this narrow definition of cancel culture if you take you know maybe a broader definition of cancel culture like i i think it's actually a good thing it's a non-violent market mechanism that, that that people can resist if it's if it's disingenuous but this is the thing is that most of what we see of it today that, that, that that's really abusive is based on a kind of fraud you know because what they're saying is this this person you need to cancel this person or i'm going to stop i'm going to boycott well you you don't buy our products or watch our shows anyway. Your boycott really doesn't mean anything. So if it's like a group of people over here who are offended by something over here, you know, they, they can intervene and say, I don't want you watching that person. I don't want that audience to be able to connect with that content provider. And what they're really trying to do is manipulate and control the conversation. And that's, as the SJWs would say, quite problematic. So... If there is a case of a bad actor, though, you know, why not engage in this practice of, of, you know, raising the issue saying, you know, please cancel this person. You know, you know, I think boycotts are really essentially more effective. But if you if you want to get the attention of that audience, you can say, hey, guys, look, I, I see you're you're watching Alex Jones. I don't like Alex Jones's message. I don't think you should, should watch it. You know, here's the worst form of the of, of a response. Like if that's if that's your sentiment, Karen, the worst response you can have is the statist response, is the government response to say, let's use force and violence to shut you down. Let's censor you. 
right? Let's stop you from being able to get your message out to your audience, right? And that's that's the the that's a whole other that's an actual violation of the non-aggression principle, right? When you're forcing speech to be suppressed, you're you're forcibly interfering with people receiving a message or content that they want to consume. You know, so what's what's the the, the less worse level? Well, you know, you could lie and make it happen, and that's kind of what some cancel culture is. We say. Well, if they're, if they're just totally fabricating what it's about. And see, the thing is here, it's not just uh, that you're shutting down uh, a potentially legitimate business because of, of your distaste. But as is pointed out in the story, there's a whole other level of political manipulation to this, right? And once we have allowed cancel culture to become, I, I mean, I guess I would say it's like masculinity. There's, there's healthy masculinity, divine masculinity, yeah, there's toxic masculinity uh, you know, if you want to use that term and and mean something else you know i think the way most people talk about cancel culture is like a, a sort of toxic kind of cancel culture where there is the potential for a healthy guy so if you get to that you know there's government intervention there's there's fraud there's like emotional disingenuous uh, engagement where you know you see like i see that you're watching alex jones i don't like that you're watching alex jones i'm gonna lie to you about alex jones or i'm gonna tell you that Alex Jones is, have, is is making me upset, you know, when I'm just, it's just, the, just that I disagree with him and you watching him. And for political reasons, I'm like, you know, hey, I'd, I'd rather you watch CNN with me. By the way, this isn't me. This is me pretending to be Karen. Okay. Go, go with it. I, do I need to do the voice and put on a wig? I don't think so. So, you know, if, if I'm telling you, hey, I don't like that you're watching Alex Jones, I can say, you know what? In fact, I, I, I don't like that you're watching Alex Jones so much that I'm, I'm going to put out a public statement. And I'm going to boycott his advertisers because I don't want the resources if I buy something to go to support a message that I disagree with that I think makes the world a better place. Like, that's righteous. That's what you want to do that. You're totally within your rights to do that. And that's where this battle should be fought on the battlefield of peace and respect and, you know, nonviolent means of, of disengaging to disfavor a message and to say, look, look, hey, we're going to we're going to have a petition. You know, I'm going to put out a public statement and combine my voice with others to amplify it so that you in the Alex Jones audience know that we don't like that you're watching his show. Okay. You know, you can watch it anyway. There's no forceful interference there. And, you know, then, you know, like, and, and obviously our conversation is so manipulated and people are so unconscious, unconscious, unconscientious. I mean, this is again, a big part of, our message is to say, raise your level of consciousness. Be paying attention to things that matter. And then you're not susceptible to this kind of manipulation. You know, I, like for the, for our Kanukistani friends to the north, you, you reelected Justin Trudeau after going, like you couldn't, you couldn't find someone to lead your government. You couldn't find a prime minister who doesn't have a history of blackface so extensive. He doesn't know how many times he's appeared in black. Like, really? Really? You know, you're falling for the bigger thing of, of needing a prime minister in the first place. So I'm not surprised that you don't do that much better than we have here with Cheeto Jesus in the United States. So nobody is safe from being canceled by the online mob. In fact, one day you can be part of the online mob and the next day you can cross some imaginary line and you're the one being canceled. Anyone can be the subject of an internet witch hunt. But people in the public eye or positions of power tend to have more to lose. Sometimes it's a matter of getting everyone to unfollow the victim on social media. And other times it goes all the way to in-person stalking or doxing. So like getting everybody, if you, if you, you know, again, I get this perspective that, that, that Daisy has, and I, you know, I don't want to, you know, discredit her. I'm just saying that like what I, I, I think it's important to point out that, you know, if you're, you know, how would, why would you call yourself the victim if all that's happening is you're being unfollowed on social media, you said something, people don't like your content anymore, or you don't want it to get news from you. Like that's, that's how the market works. You know, like that's okay. Now stalking or doxing, violating privacy, violating personal space, being threatening. Whoa, that totally different category of cancel calls, right? Doxing, if you aren't familiar, is the practice of locating private information about a person and making it public. It could be their home address. Their children's schools, the home of their elderly parents, nothing is off limits. 
One victim of doxing was Dana Loesch, a spokeswoman for the NRA. She had to do a midnight move to pack up her family and quickly relocate when her home address was revealed publicly and threats against her escalated. Author Natasha Tynes was also canceled and it nearly destroyed her life. Really, is one bad action deserving of all this, especially if it's only bad in the politically correct sense of the word? Taking away someone's livelihood, threatening their safety, and putting their children at risk, it's out of control, like many other things in our country right now. And it, it absolutely is. Um, can't, so but even even the wording, and I, I hate to have to disagree with the author, who I, I love her work, you know, generally speaking, Daisy does, does a great job here. Um, but, you know, if, if, if she says cancel culture is out of control, you know, you wouldn't say like cancer is out of control. Cancer is a disease. It's bad. The cancel culture, if cancel culture is out of control, well, then we need to bring it back in control. We need to make sure that it's d done ethically for the right reasons, two criteria, right? So when she, when she gets into is, is one bad action deserving of all of this? Well, you know, sometimes it is, but no, most, most of the times that we see this as high profile examples right now, it's bullshit. Yeah, it's absolute bullshit.